Good morning. My name is my name's John O'Brien. I'm the president of Prince George's Hospital Center. On behalf of our 1,600 employees, I welcome you. Thanks for being here this morning on another momentous step in our progress, our process of progress for health care in Prince George's County, especially at a time when we are on the verge of implementing major implements of the uh, Affordable Care Act. Uh, we're making health care better along with the nation, and we are getting tremendous support for this effort as evidenced by all of you in attendance today, and particularly our public officials who are with us today. I'd like to introduce uh, introduce them if I could, starting with, of course, the Lieutenant Governor who is with us here on the podium today and the County Executive, Rashern Baker. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Uh, we have Senator Doug Peters here, head of the delegation for Prince George's County. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Senator Ulysses Curry. And also a member of the Prince George's Hospital Center Board. Thank you, sir. And we have uh, Delegate uh, Marvin Holmes here. Yeah. <laughs> Delegate Ann Healy. <laughs> Delegate uh, Jolene Ivey. <laughs> Delegate Ivey is also the uh, chair of the Prince George's County delegation. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Delegate Barbara Frush, member of the Dimensions Board. Delegate Tawana Gaines, also a member of the Dimensions Board and Chairman of the Prince George's Hospital Board. We have uh, Delegate Alonzo Washington. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we have Council Member uh, Mel Franklin. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Council Member uh, Andrea Harrison, also a, a member of the Dimensions Board. <laughs> And uh, Council Member Eric Olson. Mm -hmm. uh, Council Member Ingrid Turner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Council Member Karen Tolles. Mm -hmm. We have Michelle Schultz here representing Senator Mikulski. <laughs> and uh, I think that concludes our representatives here right now. I did. We did delegate Ivy. Yes, thank you. Eric, delegate Swain, thank you very much. <laughs> very good. Now it's my pleasure to get the uh, proceeding started by introducing the, uh, the leader of our effort here at Dimensions, uh, our president and CEO, Mr. Neil J. Moore. Thank you, John, and good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. This is truly a great day in Dimensions Healthcare System in Prince George's County. Um, I, too, welcome every one of you to this event this evening, and I bring you greetings from the entire Dimensions Healthcare System, the 3,000 employees that we have, the medical staff that we have here, and all the patients that we provide healthcare services to. We started this journey about two years ago and have been making strides ever since. Not only have we been reaching various milestones, but we also have been improving the overall healthcare system here at Prince George's Hospital. There are many to thank, but let me say special thanks to the governor, the lieutenant governor who's here, our county executive, and the Board of Directors of Dimensions Healthcare, and last but not least, our new partner, the University of Maryland Medical System. Yeah. Talking about the University of Maryland, we are already collaborating on many fronts for emergency room services, orthopedic services, medical staff recruitment, for key areas like our trauma and our intensive care. And we are also working on rebuilding our cardiovascular program. The type of information that I just summarized goes a long way, and that's the reason why we're all gathered here today. And it's truly 
the reason why I am honored to be the president and CEO of Dimensions Healthcare System. With that, I would like to close by saying, once again, I'm one of the proudest individuals and residents of Prince George's County today. Thank you. <laughs> Now to uh, discuss the, uh, the board's uh, decision, I'd like to introduce uh, the chairman of the Dimensions Board, Judge C. Philip Nichols, Jr. Thank you, John. Lieutenant Governor, County Executive, Senators, Delegates, members of the County Council, all the elected officials who join us, and most importantly, our employees and the people that we serve. Thank you for coming. This morning, <clears throat> and I'm pleased to announce that the board, I can have them stand, the members of the board, please who were able to stay and not run off to work. It's here for the board. I'm pleased to announce that this morning, the board, along with its stakeholders, took a major step forward toward a $650 million investment in better health care in our county and in Southern Maryland. The site selection process was long, sometimes tedious, but thorough. We believe it was a fair assessment of all the sites that led us to the conclusion to select the Largo Town Center site. The board agreed and voted unanimously to support the recommendation of the committee. There are good days and great days in life and in the life of our county and state. Today is one of those great days. Thank you all. As you can tell by the gentleman standing behind me, this is not a decision made alone. And <clears throat> our county uh, administrative officer, Brad Seaman, Vice President Mark Wasserman of the University of Maryland Medical <clears throat> System, and Neil Moore, our president, are going to give a brief explanation of how this process occurred and what led us to this moment this morning. Please. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Judge Nichols. Again, we're all glad to be here on such a great day for Prince George's County. Um, what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about the process that was used to come to this particular decision and um, some of the factors that weighed on the decision to select the Largo site. Uh, first of all, many of you know we signed a MOU back in July of 2011. Uh, since that time, we've had a number of hurdles that we need to jump in order to make this happen. Uh, we've jumped many of them, have a few left. Uh, this was a big one, actually finding a site. You can't have a hospital if you don't have a site. Um, so uh, sometime uh, uh, last year, we began the process of trying to size what would be needed for the hospital. Uh, that's why it was important to have the input of the University of Maryland Medical System and Dimensions Healthcare. They are the healthcare experts and knew from the hospital healthcare standpoint what kind of location would be best and how much acreage was needed. The acreage started large. We kind of worked it down. We talked from an economic development perspective, the desire to have density and, and look at it as an opportunity. Um, I think that most of you know that our county executive and supported by uh, the county council and our board of health has made it clear that health care is a priority in Prince George's County. But in addition to that, we saw this as an opportunity to develop an economic development engine. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, in a moment. Uh, it's also important to mention, besides the University of Maryland Medical System and Dimensions, there were other members of the uh, search committee as well. We had significant input from Dr. Josh Sharfstein with the Department of Mental Health. Uh, and Department of Human Hygiene and Mental Health. Uh, we also had input from the Lieutenant Governor's Office, and we had county executive staff input as well. We looked at it both from health care and economic development, as I talked about. One thing I should also mention is we had some expert negotiators that work with us as well. Mr. David Iannucci is back here in the corner, and Mr. Tom Himmler is somewhere in the back with him. And they are both uh, senior, member, senior members of the county executive staff. Um, so we looked for the sites, we narrowed it down, and we got it down to four sites. Sometime back in February, we presented those sites at a public forum at the Curry uh, Sports and Learning Center over in Landover, 
We had significant public input at that time. We had over 350 members of the public that showed up. Many of you were there. They stood in long lines to go to the mic and give their input on what they thought would be the best site. That was when we got the first sign of what the best site might be because the public was overwhelmingly in support of the Largo Town Center site. Uh, we then went on with that public support, continued to look at the sites. The four sites were uh, Morgan Boulevard, Woodmore Town Center, Landover Mall, and of course Largo Town Center. Uh, through the process, we used a standard set of evaluation criteria that never changed. It needed to be in a central part of Prince George's County. It needed to be accessible to transportation, I-95 access, walkable metro access, proximate to bus routes, and pedestrian access and walkability. There was also the cost of the site. We wanted to uh, pay as little as possible to actually acquire the site, and then there were site development, both on-site and off-site improvement costs that would be needed. We talked about the size of the site. We settled on the fact that it could be done on about 25 acres and allow growth for the hospital, as well as a potential health sciences campus, medical office buildings, and other things that would add to economic development. Timing of the site control was, was, was very important. We need to submit certificate of need by October 4th, and we had to have control of the site by then. And future development potential. Again, we talked about an economic development engine. When you compare the two sites, uh, they're both in central Prince George's County. When you talk about transportation accessibility, they both have great access to I-495. The Largo Town Center site is probably slightly better, uh, especially without improvements, and we'll talk about improvement costs uh, in a minute. Walkable metro access was clearly in favor of the Largo Town Center site. There is a metro there. It's walkable. There are three metro stations around the Landover site, but the closest is about a mile and a half away. Um, pedestrian walkability, we already have a development there, both residential and retail at Largo, and it's already walkable. And when we get down to infrastructure requirements, which is one of the biggest pieces, um, the infrastructure requirements, traffic improvements on-site and off-site, um, sewer connections and the like, was overwhelmingly in favor of the Largo site. The Landover site was going to require uh, tens of millions more dollars of, uh, of, the, of those improvements. And, and that's important because those improvements were linked to being able to get control of the site. In the case of the Landover uh, site, we, the, the, both the county and the hospital project we're going to need to make an investment in those uh, infrastructure costs in return for getting uh, the land at no cost. And that was a very, very big factor. In the case of the Largo Town Center, uh, there was some land swaps and other things that were done. And we were able to get control of the site there, 26 acres, for no cost to the county or to the hospital project. So that was obviously a huge factor. Timing of the site control was acceptable on both sides, and future development potential was important. Um, there was a plan for significant development at, the, at the, uh, the Landover site, but it was a plan. There's nothing there now, and you don't have things that are in the approval process. In contrast, if you look at the Largo Town Center site, there's 7.4 million square feet of both residential and office projects that are already somewhere in our approval process at various different stages. So when you look at making a choice between the two, while both have outstanding potential for future economic development, the site that was most ready to go was the site at Largo, taking a hospital, attracting um, office tenants there and medical office buildings to go along with the residential that is already there and will obviously grow because there's an, a lot of residential in that 7.4 million square feet that I talked about and putting that together with the retail, it made it the ideal site. I would like to close also by saying that the Landover site, I think we would all agree, is one of the most valuable sites in all of Prince George's County. Um, it is a desire of the county executive as well as our county council and all the residents in Prince George's County to develop that site. So we want to continue to work, build upon the negotiations and relationships that we've built there and move towards development 
of that site so that we can add that to what will happen at the Largo site and make Prince George's County one of the best places to live and best work or visit. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's energizing just being here with you guys. <laughs> uh, my name is Mark Wasserman. I'm here on behalf of the University of Maryland Medical System and our board of directors. And it just happens that one of our board members, Orlin Johnson, is right here. Uh, um, if if uh, you would indulge me, I'm just going to take a, a minute here. Just, it, well, first, in personal terms, uh, my, my brother was actually born here almost 51 years to the day. Uh, and it's, it's time to, for a new hospital, you know? <laughs> you know? Uh, the, uh, I just flashed back this morning as I was dri driving, very early driving down here. Um, the, the other is probably m m more apt to the, to the occasion here. It, I have a sort, of a, a, a sort of a long career in the public sector, and I have never been involved in anything as complex uh, and and um, challenging as this process, and uh, the amount of collaboration that has come here, which we should never take for granted, to bring us to this point, is absolutely amazing. Now, I was I was thinking about um, this, you know, the old uh, 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 bromide that it, it it takes a village. Well, it takes a village to build a hospital. And uh, the villages have chiefs, like the governor and lieutenant governor and the county executive. But sort of beneath that level, the amount of collaboration from the legislature and the county council and the patience of the employees of Dimensions and Neil and his leadership and the judge and the board, this should never be taken for granted. So we are, you know, and uh, the Ravens play tonight, by the way. Um, we are, I, know, I know that I can always draw. OK, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, we are, uh, we have made, you should, uh, uh, to begin to convey the amount of progress that's been made here over the last several years, knocking down hurdles, moving, moving forward is astounding and, yeah, and it's energizing to be part of it. So we sit here today uh, in, fo in football terms, I think really basically entering the red zone. The red zone will occur on October 4th and what's been driving all this is, um, and challenging us at the same time is, can we bring all the ingredients necessary to file a CON on October 4th, which demonstrates to the world that this is serious business. We need a site, we need a financing plan, we need consensus at, at all levels of government, uh, and we have it. So we are ready to roll forward here. Uh, and <laughs> I'll, I'll sit down. I'd like to invite up the the council chair for Prince George's uh, County Council is Andrea Harrison. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. We're all very excited. It's been a long process, and it has been a collaborative effort. It's one Prince George's County, one Prince George's County. With my, with my colleagues here and the state delegation and the county executive, we're so very, very proud to be standing here before you. And so, um, access to quality uh, and affordable health care for the county residents is a top priority for the Prince George's County Council, as you all know. And we could not be more pleased with this selection as a site for the new, uh, county's new regional medical center and the medical campus. I say campus. Today's announcement is an exciting step forward in our continuing journey to address critical health care challenges facing our county and the region. The significant findings of a 2009 RAND study commissioned by the County Council affirmed what residents were telling us about the status of health and health care in Prince George's County. And we as a body set the policy and practical political environment for health care progress in our county, designating health care as a legislative priority, strengthening our role as the county's board of health hiring expert consultants, 
and ensuring our processes included important public input and county citizens and community leaders. With the selection of the Largo Town Center, we can now move forward with building a world-class facility, which will ensure that the people of Prince George's County receive quality, affordable health care that they deserve, and our employees have a quality, beautiful place in which they can work. <laughs> Further, Building a hospital near a transit station will positively impact the county's important economic development initiatives. So we commend the hard work of the Site Selection Committee, and we look forward to continuing our partnership with Governor O'Malley, Lieutenant Governor Brown, County Executive Baker, Dimensions Healthcare, and especially the University of Maryland Medical System Board to create and implement healthcare strategies and policies that form a long-term solution to the long-standing challenge of our hospital system. Following the August recess, the Prince George's County Council will continue our active, active, active involvement in this process and the issues surrounding the development of the Largo Town Center site, beginning with a mid-September Board of Health meeting, considering the facility's certificate of need application. We do remain committed to ensuring the health and wellness needs of our citizens and that they are properly addressed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Harrison. Thank you very much. Uh, there are other uh, support players who need to be recognized here. The uh, county is also uh, led in Health and Human Services by uh, Betty Hager Francis, uh, who's with us today. <laughs> and the director of the county health department, Pamela Creekmore. <laughs> Uh, next, uh, to uh, start to bring us all together, uh, we're going to hear from our Lieutenant Governor, uh, Mr. Anthony Brown. Very excited to be here this morning uh, here at the uh, Prince George County Hospital Center with each and every uh, one of you. We've been here before with other exciting announcements not too long ago when the University of Maryland Medical uh, System announced that they would be uh, taking over the management of the emergency departments here and at other dimensions, facilities, and the improvements that have occurred since then. Uh, two years ago down in Upper Marlboro at the County Administration Building, just a little over two years ago, uh, when we signed uh, that historic uh, memorandum of uh, understanding uh, between the county and the state and UMS and dimensions. And here we are, another milestone, great day uh, in Prince George's County. I've been in Annapolis for 16 years. And I remember in 1999 when I showed up and Rashern Baker was the chair of the Prince George County delegation uh, and he got us all together uh, and we went to the governor's office uh, and we begged and pleaded and cajoled and under duress and an occasional lighthearted threat uh, <laughs> uh, sought uh, funds to subsidize uh, Prince George's County Hospital and you all remember that. Uh, and we did that every year uh, for years preceding my days in Annapolis and for every year up until most recently. And you may also remember that in 2007 when Governor Malley and I were elected, we said enough is enough. We will continue to subsidize the hospital under one condition, that we establish a long-term framework for success for this hospital. It is not enough for Prince George's County hospital center or the Dimensions Health System to merely survive from one year to the next. We are going to commit ourselves to a frame, long-term framework and funding source for not just the survival, but that this system thrives. And we are here today. We are here today because of that long march uh, that many of us in this room uh, have uh, taken uh, together. I certainly want to thank the members of the General Assembly uh, and your, your work uh, in representing the interests of this hospital. Prince George's County uh, has just been extraordinary. I uh, certainly want to thank the county executive 
uh, for being able to bring the council together to speak in you one voice, focused, and to let the best interests of the patients, the providers, and the community prevail over politics. And that's what you all did, and I really, really appreciate it. I want to thank the uh, hardworking men and women, uh, the health providers, the health workers, the support staff for what you do day in and day out. You save lives every single day. My family has had the fortune or misfortune, depending on how you look at it, of having to use the services here at Prince George's uh, Hospital Center. No one ever wants to come to a hospital. And it, except for the uh, uh, occasion when the, uh, the, the VA health system says that, Colonel Brown, you need to show up at our facility, this is my hospital of choice. It certainly is. This is my hospital of choice. So we've come together. We've made a lot of uh, progress. I want to thank the University of Maryland Medical uh, System, uh, who, um, you know, doesn't need reminding, and we're not trying to make a whole lot of trumpet fanfare around it, but uh, came to the table a little bit, uh, kicking and screaming a few years ago. But as we peeled back the onion uh, and uh, we were able to couple the challenges with the opportunities uh, of delivering a regional hospital center, not only for the residents of Prince George County, but for the entire region, uh, the University of Maryland Medical uh, System recognized the integral, important role that they can and are now playing uh, in improving the quality of care uh, in Prince George County and the region. So I want to thank the University of Maryland uh, Medical uh, System. I also want to thank Dimensions. Uh, Dimensions has been over the years uh, for some uh, a punching bag um, and uh, has taken a lot of knocks uh, and bangs. Uh, but I want to thank all of the, the men and women, whether officers or directors or staff uh, of Dimensions, um, for sticking in there uh, and recognizing that around, amidst all that swirl, the competition for limited resources to ensure then the survival, now thriving, of this system, you hung in there day in and day out because what you focus on was delivering quality care to your patients. So I want to thank you as well. So now let me get to my prepared remarks. Only kidding. <laughs> Only kidding. Let me just wrap up by saying something off my prepared remarks, I guess. Uh, yeah, he never does, so I won't either. <laughs> let me just say also to the, uh, to the members of SEIU, uh, your work here uh, has been tremendous. You, too, have stuck it out, uh, focusing first uh, and foremost on the needs uh, of your patients. So this is an exciting day. We've got more work to do. Let's get it done. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Brown, since you have voluntarily given up your patients' rights to privacy. <laughs> <laughs> I will point out that you have certainly been no stranger to this hospital. <laughs> uh, we appreciate uh, the being the uh, place of choice for care occasionally, and also for your many visits whenever there's been an opportunity, whenever there's been a need uh, to present the case, you have been here to do it for us, and we thank you very much for that. It was almost four years ago now that the uh, new county executive uh, took office. And one of the first things that we noticed out of the shoot from a healthcare perspective uh, was a sea change in attitude toward healthcare. We had a county executive, we had a county council now that was coming together on the issue of healthcare. As the lieutenant governor pointed out, there was the, uh, the come to meeting. And that resulted in a uh, commitment to improve healthcare in Prince George's County and focus on this system as the vehicle for doing that. I see Ingrid Turner here. She was the uh, council chair at the time and uh, got that on the agenda. We certainly thank you. And the way Andrea Harrison has, has spearheaded that since, county council has stepped up, worked with the county executive to make sure that health care got uh, arised as a, uh, as a priority, one of the stated priorities of county government. We appreciate it. The people of Prince George's County appreciate it. And you will have driven the result of an improved health care system as a result. Ladies and gentlemen, County Executive Rashern Baker. Let me see. Prepared remarks. Thank <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Brown. Can we give him a round of applause? <laughs> and the governor for doing a great job. Uh, certainly. Let me let me do this. Uh, let me thank a couple of people too. 
Uh, first of all, can I thank the board, can we thank the board for their work in this election today? Really, it is, it is a tough job, they have done it. Um, certainly, as I've been handed notes here, we wanted to make sure, and I'm sure the board uh, did this, and their selection is that there was significant community input. Um, and, you know, it, it's, it's interesting, I actually watched the, the tape I was saying this to Brad Seaman the other day. I watched the tape of the, uh, of the citizens that came out, residents of Prince George's County, to that hearing and talked about uh, where they wanted to see the new hospital place, um, but also talked about the quality of health care in Prince George's County and how this could be a change agent. And so certainly we should give the community a round of applause for participating in this. I, I'm going to deviate just, just slightly because um, uh, if you will indulge me just for a second, you know, and, and just be totally, totally selfish um, as to why we're here today. Well, back during the campaign, I've said this a couple of places, you know, we were at one of these debates and, you know, and uh, Delegate Frush and, and, and Delegate Gaines and Delegate Healy and and folks who worked with us in the, uh, when I was a uh, chair of the delegation know this. You know, I talked about health care in the hospital and bringing a new hospital to Prince George's County and building it. And I know it was part of my campaign spill. You know, it sounded good. You got a couple of rounds of applause. And then, you know, I said in the first term of the Baker administration, we're going to sign a deal to bring a new hospital to Prince George's County. And I guess they got a little sick of me saying that. And they said, well, we've been at it for 20 years. What makes you think you can do it in four years? So I said, <laughs> I said in the first year, in the first term, we're going to have this. So immediately after I won, I said, dang, how am I going to do this? <laughs> I said, I hope nobody remembers. <laughs> but just in case they did. I called up Brad Seaman, and I said, uh, I have a job for you. And as usual, he tried to duck my call. <laughs> and I said, I want you to start pulling together ideas, the people, and talking about how we get this done. Below the radar screen, start working with the governor, lieutenant governor, start working with our council members, start working with dimensions, and everybody to begin the process. Because not just because it's a campaign promise, because when you walk in this building, as the Lieutenant Governor said, when you meet the men and women who work here, from the doctors to the people who make sure it's nice and clean in here, and you understand what they've gone through to provide quality health care to residents in Prince George's County, whether you could pay or not pay. The promise is not just a campaign promise. I said to Brad, I want to get this done. I want to see it happen. And as God has blessed us in Prince George's County, we got a county council that understood it. We had a council chair that put health care the same way that I did at the top of the list, not at the bottom that understood that we can't change education, public safety, unless we change how we deliver health care in Prince George's County, because it has an impact on those two areas. I want to thank Council Chair Turner when she was there to move this up to the list and to get her colleagues to come on board. Please. I want to thank Chair Harrison for carrying the tor torch to getting us to where we are today, to, to getting her colleagues to come on board. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your work and the council's work. Give her another round of applause. I want to thank Brad Seaman for not changing his telephone number. <laughs> You know, we, they were introduced to uh, uh, Betty Francis, Pam Creekmer, Tom 
Himmler and David Iannucci and everybody. Uh, Deborah Ross is running around here somewhere. I saw her up here. All the people who came together uh, to, to get us to this day. Um, you know, I normally start off in my prepared remarks saying it's a great day in Prince George's County because that's what they write. <laughs> this is one of those times when it truly is a great day in Prince George's County. And not because the people in this room know it's a great day. And not with all due respect because the men and women who work in this hospital, the men and women who will work in the new hospital know it's a great day. But because some little child is gonna need medical attention and some frightened mom or dad or both are going to bring them to our brand new hospital that looks great, that they're going to get great care, and they're not going to know about this day, but they're going to know about the service you deliver, and that's what this is about. Thank you.